Yoda once said that Jedi use the Force for knowledge and defense, never for attack. But most Star Wars fans know it was a bit more complicated than that. Though the goal of the Jedi was always to save lives, keep the peace and heal the galaxy, sometimes that required action, violent action. The use of violence in resolving disputes was somewhat controversial among the Jedi Masters. Some believed it should be a last resort, while others, especially Jedi Guardians, were a bit more aggressive. In this video, we're going to look at the moral perspectives of three different Jedi Masters, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Shakti, and Evan Peel, regarding this issue. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Let's start with Obi-Wan. During the Clone Wars, Master Kenobi was dubbed the Negotiator by the Holonet News, a nom de guerre that spoke for itself. Kenobi not only preferred negotiation as an alternative to violence, but was unusually willing to attempt negotiations in the middle of a battle, well after the point at which most Jedi would have given up on talking. Kenobi was always willing to accept a surrender and always willing to put his differences with an opponent aside if it meant he could reach a peaceful resolution. Kenobi was perhaps the best example of a Jedi that the old Jedi Order ever had. To those sensitive to the Force, Kenobi appeared as a beacon of the light side, incredibly open to the Force. Hearing this, you might think Kenobi's strength in the light side was why he was always so open to negotiation, but it was actually the other way around. His compassion and constant drive to achieve peace with his enemies was what made Kenobi so strong in the Force. After all, lightsiders drew strength from the balance of life, from the unity between living things. It's no wonder then that Kenobi was so preferential to negotiation. Though Kenobi preferred not to fight, he was also known for being a devastating combatant, highly skilled in the use of both force powers and his lightsaber. But even when he fought, Kenobi was rarely aggressive. Many of you likely know that his preferred lightsaber form was Form 3, or Sarisu, primarily defensive form. Many Jedi favored Sarisu. During the Clone Wars, it was actually the most widely used lightsaber form. Most Jedi, even those who weren't preferential to the form, used it to defend themselves at time. But Kenobi used the form somewhat differently. Kenobi was one of the greatest Surisu masters that ever lived, the ultimate defensive duelist. In combat, he would turn his lightsaber into an impregnable shield, deflecting blaster bolts and parrying lightsabers with precision and grace. When the force was with him, he stood like a pillar of rock amidst a churning sea, blocking everything thrown at him without taking a single step back. His mastery of defense kept him alive in battle and enabled him to more easily defeat his opponents, weathering their attacks until they grew tired and could be disarmed. He never gave up on his enemies and was willing to spare them and reach a peaceful resolution even in the midst of a finishing blow. Virtually everything Obi-Wan Kenobi did was rooted in the same interpretation of Jedi philosophy. Jedi doctrine held that all life was sacred and should be nurtured, and Kenobi took that to heart. While the Jedi also taught that lives should be taken only when absolutely necessary, the definition of absolutely necessary varied from Jedi to Jedi, with many Jedi reasoning that all bets were off once combat began. But Kenobi was willing to push his luck much further. To him, it was worth risking his life if it meant saving or redeeming others. Even Peel drew the line elsewhere. This battle-scarred Lannic Jedi Master rarely shied away from combat, and though he always preferred diplomacy, he was quick to dispense with the pleasantries when shots were fired. Peel was one of the greatest warriors of the Jedi, fiercely loyal to the Order, the Republic, and his homeworld, Lannic, alike. Unlike most Jedi, he returned to his homeworld often and spent much of his life serving the Lannic royal family as counselor and protector. In his long years as a Jedi, Peel saw plenty of evil and had no tolerance for it at all. He would gladly battle terrorists and slavers given even the slightest provocation, sometimes even without negotiating first. This was because Peel had a different interpretation of the Jedi Code. While the likes of Obi-Wan Kenobi saw the Jedi mandate to protect life as applying to every individual life, Peel was focused on the big picture. He believed it necessary and acceptable to kill individuals to protect the lives of many. To Peel, agents of injustice such as slavers and pirates actively threatened the lives of others so he had no compunctions about killing them. When beings killed or tried to kill other beings, slaying them in turn was defensive in Peel's view. He believed that, with certain opponents, negotiation was a waste of time. The sorts of ruthless killers Jedi were often sent to stop would never be receptive to diplomacy, he argued, and they could only be brought down through the use of the Force. 
Some Jedi saw this as a slippery ideological slope and thought Peel was much too willing to kill, fearing that his philosophy would lead him to the dark side. Evan Peel was firmly on the side of the light, however, and was adamant that his approach was more conducive to justice than leniency. Furthermore, his views were shaped by his experiences with the Red Lara terrorist cell, which cost him an eye and nearly killed him. Shakti stood somewhere between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Evan Peel. She was skilled at negotiation and combat, but was perhaps most notable for her guile. Master Kenobi once described her as the most cunning Jedi he'd ever met, and this was no exaggeration. T was a master of subtlety, preferring to outsmart her opponents. Unorthodox techniques and outside-the-box plans were her go-to, while her methods also involved deception, which was a bit of a sticky issue for many Jedi who regarded deception as a tool of the Sith. T's tactics often involved many of the same extremes as Kenobi's and Peel's. She was exceptionally compassionate and willing to negotiate with her opponents, much like Kenobi. She was always willing to give others second chances, and on one occasion even put aside her differences with the being who had killed her Padawan. At times, she could be an aggressive fighter, the sort of Jedi that attacked first and invited her opponents to surrender only once she had defeated them. This wasn't an inconsistency in her moral philosophy, mind you. T weighed compassion and action against each other, preferential to neither and adapting her tactics depending on the situation. In this manner, she was adhering to the Jedi virtue of balance. Philosophically speaking, Shakti would probably have agreed with both Kenobi and Peel. She, like Peel, was perfectly fine with killing her opponents when they threatened the lives of innocents, and she largely agreed that that was inherently a defensive move. However, she also believed in redemption, and was always willing to give her opponents a chance to repent even if she thought that killing them was justifiable. This was more of a pragmatic approach than Kenobi's or even Peel's, even though it was a bit non-committal. In practice, this sort of moral flexibility made Shakti unpredictable and hard to read. She would attack with all the viciousness of a crate dragon, all while urging her opponent to surrender and turn away from the dark side. She displayed this in her battle with Galen Marek, Darth Vader's secret apprentice during the dark time. In their battle on Felucia, Shakti showed no hesitation in trying to kill Marek, but at the end of some time, she took pity on him and urged him to reconsider his path. Marek killed Shakti, but her words ultimately guided him toward redemption. That makes nine Jedi Masters whose moral philosophy we've discussed. Are there any more you'd like us to look at? Feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.